So um, if I can have your attention, we're going to do something a little bit different today. Um, you guys may remember our, our previous guest, Nick Cave, who was uh, here last month and is, has rejoined us this month. And they're excited that you're back. So we were, we were talking earlier today about, you know, what are we going to do with this time? And, and I had talked with you guys a little bit about some different questions. And, and uh, Nick and I were talking before lunch and then over lunch. And uh, his suggestion, which I think is absolutely brilliant and is going to be a lot of fun, is just to really have a conversation and to not have this whole sort of talking head, blah, blah, blah kind of thing that you guys are going to tune out and just kind of zone out in, in the lecture room and everything else like that. So uh, if we look at the larger goal is about you guys getting a glimpse into you know, potential directions you could go with creative work and getting insight into you know, what it is to do that, um, Nick's suggestion was for both of us to kind of talk about that. and, and uh, We'll have questions, and you know it's kind of live without a net. We're just going to sort of talk. So part of that, and since you guys are way back there, and we are mic'd for the for the uh, cameras and everything, but we want to get everybody kind of as interested and as engaged and, and intimate as possible. So I'd like all of you to just really crowd in and get up and come on down. So yep, you're coming down. You're sitting on the carpet here. Going to sit up on those tables. Just stay out of the way of the cameras and come on down. Don't be shy, come on. It's story time. Oh God. Hi guys. <laughs> Crowd on in, there's lots of you guys, hey. It's adorable, like I need a nap mat. Like I'm in kindergarten again. Come on, don't be shy. Plenty of room around here. <coughs> Maybe you can come over a bit. So they're not just so. A little more. I'm trying to watch the cameras. Don't be shy. Keep coming in. Keep coming in. You can come all the there's, way up there's hundreds here. of you guys. So we won't bite. We won't <laughs> kick you. We promise. Look, you can, you can touch me. I have a Nick. question for y'all, go. You in the green jacket. <laughs> keep coming. Keep coming. Plenty of room. And then we'll just all sort of have nap time together. <laughs> well, hopefully not. We'll be we'll be hopefully interested enough. So, all, all right, we're all good. So, do you want me to start, or do you have a question? Yeah, I'll get started. So, did anybody get to make it to his, his talk last night? Really? Anybody? A couple people. I know it was like a big waiting list down at the Nasher and everything like that, and. Um, you know, I mean, you guys have seen a couple different visiting artist presentations now, and, and hopefully you'll get out more and, and see a lot more. Um, but I was talking with Nick, uh, like I said, we were out at lunch and just kind of just chatting, like we're going to chat now. <laughs> and I was talking about how the right at the end of the talk, it got to this gem that really I will probably think about perhaps honestly the rest of my life. It was really, I think, a, just a brilliant statement that he made where we're talking about kind of, well, you do all these interdisciplinary things and, and you, you dance and you perform and, you, and it's art and it's craft and it's all fiber and fashion, and it's all these kind of things. And how we're sort of, you know, all the people that work in that way get tired of this. It's like, oh, well, what label am I and everything else? And so you're having question and answer with the audience there at the Nasher and, and uh, it was just kind of an offhand thing. Someone, you had just said like, well, I'm not an artist first. And it was sort of like this, Oh, is anybody going to go there? Like, what, what, what was that? <laughs> and so um, you even complimented the woman that asked you, like, oh, that, you're, you're the brave one. Because she said, well, if you're not an artist first, like, what are you? And uh, he said that he, he was a messenger. And what really resonated for me was that to find a word, like a single word that can encompass what it is that you are or that you want to be. Like, I don't know, that was really intense for me. And I spent... I don't know if the storms kept you guys up last night, but I certainly did not get a whole lot of sleep. But uh, Nick was slept exhausted, right slept through right it. through that. Didn't hear nothing. So, you know, it's like 2.30 <laughs> in the morning, and there's like lightning, and I'm not sleeping. I'm like, oh, I got to like take care of Nick tomorrow, and <laughs> got to have this lecture thing, and I'm like stressing and everything. And, and I just kind of went back to that, and I was thinking like, 
well, what, like, what am I, and what, what do I want to do, and how do you, how do you sum up all these things that that we do? And I think that part of this, and why we invite, you know, speakers, and and why we have presentations by your. Uh, your instructors and why I talk a little bit about my work and things like that is to give you some of those insights to really think about what do you guys want to do? I mean, I had certain ideas of it's like, oh, like, you know, when I was in my 3D foundations class and all that and I was, we were talking on the way over and, and I was saying, yeah, you know, I'm going to like get a great teaching job and then I'm going to be like the famous artist and then we're going to have like the big coffee table book and that'll be in like the libraries and, and you know, it's like this real sort of narrow, naive idea of like what it is that you're supposed to be doing. And none of that was about the work. None of it was about what we, what we create and what we put out there to the world and what we want that to do with people. And so... I, I just, I'm still wrestling. I have like some other really bad words that are just kind of bouncing around that aren't working for me yet. Um, but may, maybe I'll get to that point. But um, that word messenger I thought was, was just a really, really key word and I think something that I wanted to share because I figured most, most of you guys weren't there last night and that was, that was a real big uh, takeaway for me. So, um, I don't know what, where did like when did you come when did you come to that? So I guess the question maybe like, what is the question? like yeah. <laughs> James, you had to ask a question there. You know, conversation goes both ways. But um, so it's like when when did that when did you come to that? Like was uh, I don't know. I think it's not. Um, you know, I think it's just. Um, um, it's very intense, but I think. Uh, it's like, you know, when you sort of, you know, being an art, you know, this art thing is not like what it appears to be on the outside. It's like a lot more, it's a lot more intense, believe me, like totally so intense. But when you, you know, when you sort of go through life and you do like amazing things, you know, you're working on stuff, you know, I had a store for 10 years, it was like amazing. But you know, there's something inside of me that was like not, fully fulfilled, even though I, you know, had this amazing story showing the collection in Paris, great buyers and all that, it was still part of me that was not fully developed. And then just one day I woke up and something said, now or never. And so I had to change my life at that very second, every aspect of my life. So, yeah. you know, sometimes it's not so great, but you have to do what you have to do. And I think that sort of moment when you have to surrender to to something that's of a higher power. Yeah, and and I. So that's th when it sort of you know that's when everything sort of changes. It's not it's something that you're not quite in control of. You have to sort of accept and and um, and then once you do, then that's what that sort of is the sort of discourse that you take in terms of moving yourself forward and, and becoming who you need to become. And I, so if I did not, if I had not made that step, I would not be sitting here right now probably. Right. So it's, you know, it's, um, you know, it's something very scary, I think, to sort of, be, to be, I think it's something very scary to be fully honest about that, that as, you know, your reality. Well, that, that came up too with um, about fear, and uh, you were you had to do um, like an impromptu, out of nowhere video interview right at like you'd just done this amazing magical rehearsal with the dancers at the suits, and then we were just gonna like have some downtime, have a little lunch, and then figure out what we were gonna do here right now, and then out of the blue there was like a video interview, and and I was just there kind of waiting and listening. And um, when you're t they they had um, asked you about being a teacher because that's another thing that you do and that we both do, and uh, you had talked a lot about about fear and about understanding where that that fear comes from, and that was something that you know I was thinking about because you had kind of sprung this idea on me. I was like, holy crap! All right, we're gonna do what? <laughs> we're gonna like just kind of hang out and talk, and I was kind of digesting that, and I was. I realized like how scared I was. And it's like, well, what, what is there, are you guys gonna like <laughs> mutiny and like throw stuff at us? Or, you know, it's like, what, it's when you really identify those fears, you realize how silly they are. 
And that's why like I got 110% behind <coughs> this and I knew that it would be a much better experience and that you guys would get some of why you're here and you'll get a glimpse of you know how what what it is to take this sort of path and to be working at that level and get some of the insights hopefully that that I'm getting that just you know the the conversations and and you being around and seeing how you're working and seeing some of that professional practice I think is is both insightful and and inspiring but there's like fear is so and I talked about this you know on Monday when we have our TA meetings brought up that about you know having fear and you guys have lots, everybody has lots of different fears. You guys are worried about like grades and getting this project done and wrestling all these other things and juggling your seven part-time jobs and commuting and all the things that you guys are juggling and everybody's juggling and everybody is, is scared of, of failure, of not doing a good job, of having 150 of you guys staring at us going, what the hell are they talking about? You know, <laughs> and it's, it's you know, I think that when you own that, when you admit it, when I put it out there to you guys and you guys kind of like laugh about it and everything else, it's, an, it's this acknowledgement that there, there's a truth there behind all of that. And if you, can't, if you can't get to that truth, the work has to come from the truth. And if, you can't, if you're racked with too much fear and doing what you think you're supposed to be doing, you, you can't get to the, the truth and you can't get to the work. And I, I, I think that's a really, like you've said a lot about, you know, be, being in this field is, is intense and, and there's um, things that you can't foresee that will be happening. And I think that trying to get to a place of truth is, is a much more challenging path than like cutting foam core without tearing up the edges or, you know, whatever it is that seems to be like the crisis of the moment that is just so not a crisis and in the bigger picture really doesn't matter. Um, but I, I think that, that that was another thing that I took from you about, because um, I think a lot about fear and that relationship to truth. And you would brought that up with, with your teaching, and I'm sure you find that like with your uh, work. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, I think we live with that every day. It's like, you know, you, you know, it's like, you know, it's like, you know, when I do, it's like, you know, I had a critique Monday with my grad students. You know, they're so, they get so stressed out when, when it's time for that. But, you know, because I'm really sort of, you know, I need to, I need the work to be at a, I need you to be able to somehow have the confidence, you know, in, in your work. And if I feel, a, a, if I look at the work and I know that it's, that confidence is not there, then I know that you're not sort of approaching it from, that sort of place of truth. I think it's, um, but you know, not everyone can see that, you know. But that just comes with, you know, I'm attracted to fear, so that's what sort of stimulates me. You know, I'm sort of like drawn to it, and so that's what, you know, I, I find that's why I, I get sort of excited and on the sort of edge with, with the way I'm thinking, but I'm still very afraid. But I'm not afraid enough to sort of try it. It's like, you know, diving off the diving board the first time. You're like, you're like, oh my God. You fit, you're in your head, you think you're gonna hit like a brick wall or something, <laughs> and it's water. Uh, but it's just that, you know, it's that moment, it's that first sort of moment, and then when you sort of do it, it's like uh, there's this uh, amazing breakthrough. But I think you can't really get there unless you sort of take that sort of leap of faith and, and I think and I can't you know I can only just sort of encourage you to do it I can't do it for you we can only rally behind you but I think when when you know students know that you've got their back in spite of you know they may have a hard critique but somehow they know that you you have their back I think that's where it becomes I think that's where the work can get done because I think it's it's sort of you know, there is some cushion there somewhere. And I learned that from grad school. It's like, you know, my professor was like, oh, so extreme, hard. I was always mad. I mean, he, oh, I was mad a lot, of, most of the time. But, you know, he taught me how to trust myself because he was, you know, 
demanding, you know, I had to be responsible for like my work. It's like being in court, you know, you've got to defend your work. If you don't defend your work, then you're going to lose the case. So it's the same kind of principles that are applied there that, you know, if you, you know, you you make choices, you should be able to support those choices. And I think we, there's like all these different things. I mean, just kind of bring it back to you guys and, and into the class and that everything that we're doing and, you know, they, some of them may feel like insane loops and hoops that you have to jump through and, and everything else. But, you know, the different critiques structures or the different <laughs> models or the different materials like throwing you guys curveballs all the time like just as soon as you might kind of get the hang of bending some wire poof it's gone now I have to deal with this foam core crap or okay I finally figured how to do that without like you know having it look like a gerbil chewed it no now we have to deal with wood you know and so it's all of those curveballs and that structure is it's it's knowing since, you know, presumably I've had a little bit more experience and I kind of know hopefully what's down the road for a lot of you guys, if you stick with this creative practice and keep pushing yourself and keep challenging yourself, that it's, it's there's constant curveballs that just like keep coming up. And I mean, that's what I loved about today. I was like, total curveball. He threw at me like, hey, let's do this. Ah, okay, all right, we'll make it happen. We'll figure but it you out. know, right now you're freshman, right? Sophomore. <laughs> but right now, I think, you know, just being in, in school, I mean, it's just all about just really sort of building your foundation. I mean, the more you learn about, you know, processes and materials and how they sort of work, the, it's just sort of your vocabulary. It's, it's, the, it's, it's the information you need in order to know how to sort of navigate and make decisions on, on what is appropriate for a, an, a, an idea. And you should sort of keep it like that. I mean, even right now for me, it's like, a, you know, it's always a new material that's been introduced in the studio that I'm not familiar with. So it's, it doesn't stop here at school. It's, you know, it continues to be about the same, you know, the next body of work is a new set of sort of questions. So that then opens up a new sort of can of worms. So it's just, you know, it, it's nev the cycle never stops. And I think that. So how do you keep it? Uh, how do you yeah. how do you keep it going? How do you keep yourself? Why do you keep doing it? I I keep doing it because um, I mean honestly I mean this I know it's going <laughs> to sound like a total suck up to you guys, but it's like you guys are so inspiring to me. You really are in that the creative solutions and the the problem solving that you guys are going through it, it's like <laughs> it's like the biggest arc, you know, and because it gets. You, you get more and more skill sets. You get, presumably, I know a little bit better what I'm doing, maybe, than you guys do, hopefully, <laughs> a little bit. But, I mean, I, and I think what, like Nick was saying about that, that aspect of fear of not really knowing what you're doing. If, if you're really pushing the work and you're really evolving, you're constantly a student. You're learning from the materials. You're learning from the processes. You're learning about what happens when it goes out into the world. And so it's, it's that same kind of process and so you guys inspire me to keep doing that and to be okay not really knowing what I'm doing I'm in the studio and you know I'm, I got to get pieces done just like you guys got to <coughs> get pieces done I got to get pieces done I got to send them out to shows and you know Nick has his two concurrent solo shows in New York that he's got to get stuff done for and you know it's just you just got to get the stuff out the door and and just you know the same kind of deadlines that you wrestle with and so that seeing everybody kind of survive and a certain percentage of you guys thrive with not really knowing what you're doing and really embracing that and really embracing some of that fear of like, all right, I don't really know what I'm doing and I, this could totally fail, but I'm just gonna go for it. And you know, that's what, what I do when I'm in the studio. And so it's you know, that back and forth of, you know, being in the studio, I mean, I may not be in the 3D studio with you guys, but I'm also teaching a smaller studio class in metals and problem solving with them, the curveballs that they throw at me, like, I want to do this. You want to do what? <laughs> Why would you do that? Like, where would that come from? And those kind of unique perspectives that in some ways maybe I've had too much training and so I lack some of that freshness. And then you guys come at me with questions and, and probably the same with, with your guys' instructors of your different sections, like, you wanna do what? 
and that, that challenge of trying to solve those problems together, uh, that just, I mean, it just, it's so inspiring. And uh, I couldn't, I couldn't be, I couldn't separate these things. I couldn't be alone in the studio, just kind of doing my thing. And I couldn't just be teaching. I mean, they really, for me, are this, are so, so the same. I mean, they just feed each other and they're so complimentary. And um, it's, it's just, I was really, really fortunate to, you know, end up working for some of my teachers as an assistant. And I knew what I was getting into. I knew this juggling act of like, oh my gosh, I gotta teach these classes. I got all these committees. I got all these meetings. I got all this other stuff. And I gotta get in the studio. And I gotta have all these shows. And I gotta come up with all these assignments. And I gotta deal with like the total meltdown student that is, you know, having an apocalypse. And, you know, <laughs> it's just, I knew what I was getting into. And I was so privileged and honored to be able to get into that. And it, I just keep that appreciation every day when I'm laying awake with thunder and lightning at three o'clock in the morning <laughs> going, I really need sleep. I can't believe this is happening. And it's just like, all right, so what? It's a little sleep. I've, I've done bunches all nighters. I've done back to back all nighters. I've made it happen. I'll make it happen again. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> she knows. Same, similar? With the teaching and the making and the... You know, um, yeah, I mean, you know, for me, teaching, you know, I get, like, especially when I know there's a critique, I'm, like, so fired up because, you know, walking in, into the classroom and not sure what I'm going to experience is is really stimulating and and challenging. And if I have to be hard, how can I be constructive but direct and supportive at the same time. Uh, it's hard to do a little bit, but <laughs> I think it still comes back down to, you know, if you know I have your back, you, you know, I can push you as far as, as I possibly can. But, um, and everyone's different, so some people can be pushed harder than others. But um, I'm just trying to remove the student for a minute you know, what sort of stimulates me, to, you know, I think uh, just putting my work in different sort of, um, under different circumstances, I think, is probably th where the challenge is. Or, 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 you know, really sort of asking, you know, is the project challenging enough for me to, to, I'm always sort of, you know, I think about, you know, an exhibition, I think about, um, if it's a collaboration, like how does this further my growth? No matter what, small or large, I always think about like how is this going to influence me down the road? So that's what keeps me sort of chasing after of it. Um, I don't know what I'm chasing toward, but it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, this is all I can do, I mean, you know, when you know that this is all that you can do, I mean, I had, I had other amazing jobs, but when I know this is, at the end of the day, this is all I want to do, then I have to decide, okay, then I have to somehow figure out how I'm gonna design my life to where this is my life. Because I wanna be happy, so. Well, and I, I think we talked about um, the work and, and working, and, and I had had that question of something that I'm wrestling with about like, the, how do you stop working? I mean, once you've found, and, and probably, you know, foam core or balsa wood is not the passion of your guys' lives. I know that. Uh, maybe but it's his life. <laughs> it's like, it's like, I'm pretty, well, we've that's heard what, that, what, six times that's now? What they're, <laughs> that's what they're kind of dealing with right now, so I'm trying to bring it back to them. But it's, I mean, <laughs> once, once, you, once you lock on to what that is, and then that that's a whole other problem like right now probably most of you are wrestling with the like well i think i really like photography or i think i really like this or that or i think i want to go towards fashion or you know you have some ideas and hopefully we're we're giving you more information about making those decisions better and everything but it's it's like and then when you really start locking into it and then it starts getting more and more focused to really your own body of work like okay maybe you've, like for me i found okay I like making things. I like 
So that's sculpture, okay, it's not painting. I like making stuff, so that's sculpture. And then within sculpture, it's like, wow, there's something about metal, I don't know. And then, you know, then that even kind of kind of changed, and now there's just a variety of different materials that I'm really into. But it, it's like, as you, you find and resonate with that, that passion or that focus, then that's a whole other set of problems. Like, how do, how do you not work? How do you do anything but work? And you have, I mean, you have to sleep, you have to feed yourself. We we're talking about like cooking and, and things like that. But it, it's, that's, that may seem maybe like a real alien problem for some of you maybe right now, or maybe some of you have locked onto that and you found that. Um, but ho and I really hope that'll, that'll happen in some way for all of you guys. But it's, that's, that's I think, a, a, the, diff the next level I mean, level which is an challenge. interesting question. Like, you know, we can raise hands right now. Like, how many of you in this room really like, making things or being artistic. I mean, truly like a hundred percent, like you just can't, like you would give up going to a bar. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, right? <laughs> but you know, it, it really sort of comes down to that at some point in your life where you have to sort of, you know, like for me right now, it's like, okay, let's say if I'm in Berlin, if I'm not doing anything the next day, I will go clubbing. <laughs> but if I have something to do the next day, I'm not gonna go because I don't wanna be exhausted because I'd probably come from the club right into what I have to go into. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> so you've gotta like make these sort of decisions on how does this sort of all sort of play out. Yes, I want to have a social life and a personal life, but you know, my, I work out all the time. It's like I, I think about it all the time. It's like I have three friends and we, that's all we do. We think about working. We talk about art all the time. That's all we really sort of do. I mean, they're like amazing artists to both of them. And, uh, but we're interested in, you know, talking about it and how it sort of relates to our day-to-day -day existence in, in the world. Uh, or just things that we're sort of experiencing. So it's, but it's, it's interesting how, you know, we can just sort of be walking down the street or we're on the phone and just, just that, you know, we choose to see the world in this sort of creative way. Like any little thing could be magnificent if you sort of are open to how you're sort of seeing it out there in the world. So, you know, th for me, that sort of is, you know, Where's, what's the fuel behind the work? Well, it's really sort of how I move in the world. It's not just one thing, it's like everything. It's every sort of experience. It's like right now I'm excited about this, ex you know, being here right now, I, I get so, I'm excited about like going into the studio because, you know, <laughs> it's just providing me again, just, you know, this sort of continuous way of thinking and, you know, ideas around motivation and, and drive and. When, and you had talked a lot and I mean, I know you've done tons of presentations and that was one of the reasons that we wanted to change it up right now. So it wasn't just another kind of like standing up at the podium talking head <laughs> thing that you've done way too much. And I really appreciate that you talk a lot about kind of things that are magic and, thing, and dreaming. And the, these kind of like, and I talked a little bit, like if you guys remember when we did that, that quick little portrait exercise and the whole thing about keeping playful with your work and stuff like that. And you know, that, that we all, in a way, when we're kids, we're all artists, we're all creative and we're all, you know, we're drawing and we're making things and we're playing in the dirt or whatever ways that you were expressing yourself as, as kids. And somewhere that sort of living inside of your own dream world gets beat out of you. I mean, it's like, oh, well, you got to get a job and you're supposed to be an accountant or, you know, whatever it is that, that kind of gets, right. you know, and I think probably most, I hope, most if not all of you here have like fought that good fight. You're like, uh-uh, I'm going to school for this. This is my path. I've identified this. I don't really have a whole giant grasp of what my life is going to be in this path, but this, there's something about this I'm resonating with and I'm, I'm going for it. And, you know, I know, I don't know about you guys, I had to fight to go to art school. I mean, it was like, you know, I was like the good little son and getting good grades and all that stuff. And it was like, going to art school. No, I'm not going, to, I'm not doing engineering. No, I'm like, 
and it was it was a fight and it it will always be a fight to a certain extent and why well i i mean i don't think the culture like is really helpful <laughs> oh you mean okay you mean on that level on that level like yeah it's all, like you you got to be you got to have that passion and that conviction to to fight for it to like make those kind of choices and to you know really keep keep that that dream alive or get back to that that place of of sort of joy that you have with the work and fight off everything else that isn't going to support that I don't, that's not a question really i'm just no, i'm just sort of thinking like do i believe that i don't think so you don't? i think not really because i really sort of separate that okay because then you know i'm not I'm interested in putting it out there in this sort of global way, but I'm not interested in sort of like, sort of, you know, I, ch you know, it's like there's an art world that's large enough for you to sort of maintain a balance in, and everything else sort of doesn't matter. Yeah. So did you have anyone like ridicule you? Oh, absolutely that? not. <laughs> Never. Lucky. Lucky I'm lucky. I mean, and so, well, you know what? You just have to sort of move forward and do what you're going to do. I mean, when I, when I graduated from undergraduate school, now my mother and my dad came with the truck thinking I was going to move back to Missouri. <laughs> and I was like, no. And they were like, well, you don't have a job. And I was like, I know. And they were like, well, how are you going to support yourself? And I'm like, I don't know. And I just was like, <laughs> I'm not moving home, that's for sure. And I didn't move home. You know what, at some point you have to just sort of like, again, that's that leap of faith and just, you have to just sort of, I didn't have a job for maybe a year. I just kind of like was not very responsible. <laughs> uh, after I graduated, I just kind of hung out and, oh God, you know, lights, <coughs> electricity turned off, phone disconnected, just all that stuff that, you know, normal things that, you know, <laughs> at that age happens. And then I just decided I needed to work one day. <laughs> I was like, I gotta find a job. And so I did. And, um, but you know, uh, the one thing that I made sure that no matter what I did, it had to be something creative. That's the only way I was gonna be able to survive. Mm -hmm. I had to have something creative. I mean, I had some amazing jobs, you know, working for some amazing companies, but, you know, I wasn't happy, so I quit. And then I decided to go to grad school. And, uh, you know, again, sort of throwing all the sort of security away, and then you go into grad school. And then, you know, my mother's flipping out, like, oh, my God. And then, you know, I'm not going to pay for grad school. You're on your own. Like, okay, I know. Um, <laughs> And you just sort of like, but somehow it's like, you, you know what, it's sort of, you know, it, you know, in the creative world, you know what, as time goes on, something internally, you know when it's time to go to grad school, you know when it's, you, you, there's something that happens that you just sort of. It's like a homing beacon. I don't even know what that is. It's just, it's just something that, it's a feeling. So I knew it was time for me to go to grad school. And so I did, here, here for one year. And then I went to Cranbrook. Because coming here, I came from a private institution. And so coming from a school that was like 80 students only to a you know, university, which I was literally just like in shock and just couldn't deal and just, it was not for me. Mm. And then I had to like, Move, move on. Um, and it didn't matter if I had another year of grad school or left or not. It's not about that. It's about, you know, what do I need for myself, for my internal sort of spirit? So, yes, I had to start over graduate studies, but, you know, you cannot sort of like make sort of wrong decisions when it comes to things like that. You know, if it's time to go, it's time to go. You know, you've got to just, you know, because those are the, those moments in your life that, you know, you know, you're, you're, you're sort of protected under this sort of, uh, you know, educational sort of 
space. You know, you're sort of, you know, and then the moment the rug is pulled out from underneath you, then it's a different kind of reality. Uh, you know, which could lead us right into sort of like, you know, feedback, criticism, and all that. I mean, you, it's, you know, it's better. You know, I knew in undergraduate school that, you know, I, all my professors came from Cranbrook. So they were just like hard and bringing it. So, and then I, you know, demanded a certain level of, you know, they're not, I'm not, then I'm not there for them, they're there for me. So I thought, well, you know, I need to take advantage of that. So I would, you know, I, I don't want a soft critique. I never wanted a soft critique. I need you to bring it. I need you to tell me exactly. I don't want like, you know, sort of, well, you know, maybe you can consider, I don't want to hear all that. <laughs> I want you to tell me what is working, what is not working, so I can sort of like pull it together. I, it's, it's, you know, that's just what has to happen. Yeah. And, uh, and so that's how, that's what it was for me. So I think just that kind of rigor and I think that, you know, as students, you should demand what you, you should ask what you want from your critiques. You know, it's up to you, you know, if you tell me that, you know, Nick, I need you to sort of like, just sort of <coughs> hit it on the nose, then I will do that. But I know, every, every student I have, I know based on the first critique, whether or not, what you can handle, based on how you present yourself, uh, how you talk about your work. I know whether or not you have confidence, you know, it's pretty kind of clear. And so like, you know, in, on the first day of class with my grad students, you know, over the summer, I send out a little memo and I tell them that you have to come, the first day everyone has to do a 15 minute presentation about themselves. And so that's how we sort of started. And whatever that could be, you could get up there and sing if you want to <laughs> dance. You could do a video, however, and whatever you need to do is, you know, you know, it's, you know, it, you know, so I can just sort of get an understanding of, you know, who it is that I'm sort of working with. Well, I hope that uh, kind of this different, different format and, you know, I hope that you guys got a little bit of, of connection or, or insight and. At a time. I know, we're just kind of getting oh rolling, God. right? And <laughs> we got to like go. let them go or else they're going <laughs> to mutiny and they're just going to start packing up and, and, and leaving and everything. So, uh, so we, really, we really hope that, that you could hear what we were talking about and touching on today and, and that maybe you have more, more questions and answers after today, but at least, you know, maybe it just made it a little bit more real for all of you guys. So um, Great. hope you enjoyed it and, and we're honored as always to have Nick here. So thanks. And I won't make you guys sit on, on the carpet next week, I promise. All right, so. Thanks, you guys. Thank you, guys.